No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mendel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. For all those joining us live this evening on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, and welcome to the Illegal Curve post-game show. With Dave Manouk, I'm your host, Drew Mandel, here to discuss the Winnipeg Jets' winning streak coming to an end on home ice, dropping a 5-2 decision to the Washington Capitals, a game in which the Capitals led 4-0. The Jets gave their hometown fans something to cheer about and something to maybe get some hope regarding with a couple goals early in the third period, but it was all for naught. Can't get any closer than that. And an empty netter makes it 5-2 the final tonight. The Washington Capitals defeating the Winnipeg Jets. I say good evening to my comrade in arms, Dave Manouk. Nice to see you. Good, sir. The Jets, again, you know, just uh, to me, the, the tank ran out. It went into empty in that second period. They tried to fill it up quickly for the third, but not quite enough. But to me, that was a team that just finally ran out of gas. Look, the better team won tonight. The Capitals were better than the the Jets, but it, to me, it looked like they finally, uh, all the games, the three and four nights, the travel, everything else sort of caught up to them in that second period, in my estimation, Dave M. Well, Kenny, it was water bottle saying that when the Jets, uh, when Ezzy doesn't show up, neither do the Jets. So uh, that is, I believe, is that two uh, games now in a row where Ezzy has not been? Because Ezzy wasn't in the Columbus game either. Was he? Uh... Uh, he wasn't in the Columbus game. Yeah, that I so Ezzy might be, so Ezzy might, might be, be the secret. As it might be the secret of what the uh, what ails the Jets when when he's absent. So uh, well, I was also going to say if I'm and you you'll be able to correct me more than I, than my uh, feeble brain, Dave. Am, sure. But in terms of losses on home ice for the Jets, I believe the last three have all come on the weekend at home. I'm only talking about at home. Yeah, the yeah. last three have all come on the weekend and all come to Eastern Conference teams. It was that Pittsburgh game on that Saturday night a few weeks ago on on uh, November the 19th where they lost yeah. three nothing. Then there yeah. was the Columbus game on the Friday night, uh, you know, a la- uh, about uh, two Fridays ago on mm-hmm. December 2nd, where they lost 4-1. And now tonight, the 5-2 loss to the Washington Capitals. So the lesson is clearly that the Jets shouldn't play Eastern Conference teams at home on the weekend anymore, because that seems to be the recipe for a defeat. That, That's that science, could... folks. That's just science right there. <laughs> That, that does seem to be, there seems to be something there. Just to give Flying Duke a, uh, uh, a heads up, it is not the code secret code word he's guessing or she's guessing, yeah. but it's empty tank. It is not empty tank, although that would have been a good one. We went uh, we went deep into Washington um, territory on this one. So uh, that's your clue for tonight, but that secret code word won't be coming, or unique code word won't be coming your way for a little bit longer. We've got a, we've got a lot of hockey to talk about. So yeah, a, a bit of a... a you know, interesting hockey game because it was almost like each period could be broken up into halves. And mm-hmm. we saw the Capitals go on a run. They outshot the Jets 8-1 to start the first period. Then the Jets came back and outshot them 10-1 to to mm-hmm. or 9-1, to sorry. or no, Sorry, the Jets had nine straight shots to take a 10. And then the Capitals ended the period with one shot. So it was a 10-9 uh, advantage for uh, Winnipeg in the first period. But, mm-hmm. you know, obviously it was all Capitals. And then the second period, we saw something very similar where the Capitals took the first 10 or took 10 of 11 shots. So had a 10 one edge over the Winnipeg Jets in the first 10 minutes of the second period. So kind of an unusual um, back and forth. And then the Jets obviously regained a little bit of form, uh, but obviously the Capitals were able to roll in that second period. And then Winnipeg flipped the script a little bit in the third, which is, you know, I mean, if you were going to try and get back into the game, that's what they needed to do. But right. it was too little, too late uh, in, for the Winnipeg Jets, and they weren't able, obviously, to come out with the victory. And look, I mean, the Jets still have had won four games in a row coming into tonight's game, yeah. and uh, you know, still sit among the league leaders in the Western Conference. So, no doubt, it was going to be a tough matchup. And uh, the uh, Capitals were, you know, Lars Eller was playing in his 900th game, so that was kind of a big milestone for uh, for the for the Danish forward. And then and. Uh, you had which Mahal? You had uh, Alex Ovechkin, obviously, on his quest for um, to catch Cordy Howe. Obviously, wasn't going to do it tonight, but still, it was it was an interesting hockey game. And uh, you know, these are the two teams. The Southeast Division seems like a long, long time ago 
when we were talking about the South least and, you know, the capitals, I saw some tweets or comments in the chat talking about how, uh, you know, the Capitals did it again to the Winnipeg Jets. And because, of course, folks will remember, was that 2012, Drew, where the Capitals on that back, the very rare home back-to-back where they it was that, it was the It was the 2012-2013 season. Yeah, I'll tell said. you how I know that. Yeah, because I was in Colombia. I was in Cartagena, Colombia on my honeymoon for those two games where had yeah. the Jets won both those games on home ice, they would have been uh, closer to a playoff right. spot. Uh, and then they got absolutely lambasted by the Caps in those two games. I think it was something like 11-1 was the cumulative yeah. score over those like one two game, games. It wasn't game like 7-7. Seven, like seven, it was almost 7 kind of nothing like seven or 7-1 yeah. or something. And then, and then like the next four, one was 4-1 or something. Yeah, exactly right. Too much electricity, I think, in that uh, <laughs> in, back then. But anyway, yeah. the point is that uh, folks were joking that the Capitals always kind of give it to the Jets. And the Jets will have an opportunity to see the Capitals before 2022 is over so they yeah. can uh, – they can serve them some revenge back in Washington. But in yeah, I mean, 10, it was just 10 days time or so. Yeah. On that yeah, thing. exactly. So, uh, of course, Thursday there's a Friday. Yeah. yeah. Still, still, still have to focus on the, uh, the Vegas golden Knights. And of course the uh, Nashville predators this week here in Winnipeg, but. Well, look, uh, I mean, and, and to you, to that point about the games that are upcoming this week. So you got four games, you know, upcoming between now and next Sunday or including next Sunday, you got the two on home ice against Vegas and Nashville, Tuesday, Thursday. Then you go out West to face Vancouver Saturday and Seattle Sunday. If you're going to lay a stinker, if you're going to lay an egg and the, the Jets aren't going to win every game for the rest of the season, I know, you know, people want that, but that wasn't rea- realistic, uh, realistically going to happen. If you want there to be a stinker in the bunch, it's sort of this is the game to have it. This is the one that hurts you the least. It's against the you know an Eastern Conference opponent. They're, you know they getting two points and you not getting two points isn't one of those proverbial you know four game four point game doesn't impact you in the playoff standings too much. And again, so you know obviously the Jets aren't going to be happy with their performance tonight, especially in that second period. It's just, it's a, it, it's a bad 20 minutes that really sinks them for the majority of the game because they were bad sort of for the first 10, as you referenced, Dave, where Washington was taking it to the jets. Then the jets found the gear late in that, in that first period or the back half of that first period to really sort of get their game underneath them. But then that entire second period, you're going to you know basically sum up the game to that 20 minutes. Cause that's the difference in the game that, you know, when you're down for nothing, you're just not going to likely come back, especially against a decent Washington team. I know they're not in a in a great spot in the standings, but they're not a team that's going to largely give up five goals in a period. There's very few teams in the NHL that are going to give up five goals in a period when they have a four nothing lead. The Jets weren't going to stage that comeback tonight. They made it a little bit more interesting as we talked about. But if you're going to lay an egg, and then you need something to sort of refocus yourself. You want it to be tonight so that you can be focused for the Tuesday and the Thursday games against a Vegas team that is, you know, tops in the Western Conference points-wise and percentage-wise after today's Jets' defeat. And then Thursday against the division rival in the Nashville Predators, a team that is, you know, playing some better hockey as of late, although they've lost two in a row, but they're way behind you in the standings and you want to keep them below you in the standings. So in that sense... If you're gonna if you're gonna struggle in one of the you know the three games on this homestand, it would certainly be this game that you would choose, Dave. Yeah, I mean we we've talked about that for years. I mean, obviously, whenever you have a chance to, you don't want to lose games. But as you said, Drew, it's unrealistic to expect to. Um, I don't know why In Bones is we trust is blaming me now. Is I thought he was we were blaming you because you called the Jets elite yesterday. We had a little <laughs> we had a little chit chat in the in the pregame. Uh, chat i should say chit chat in the chat with the folks in the chat and uh folks were saying that this could be your fault because you called the jets elite which was which the true for the record which was mm-hmm. you just giving the people what they wanted and now sure. of course the f- fans are fickle drew so they've turned on you now this is your fault i believe unless in bones is somehow turning this around on me but uh look ultimately you don't want to lose to a, a nashville or, or a vegas teams that you're competing with obviously here in the western conference and so yeah i mean no losses are uh are, you know, you're not saying, well, a loss is acceptable, but if you're going to have to lose, you know, a, a Capitals team that doesn't mean anything to you is, is ideal. So um, it's unfortunate because it was a good crowd on hand. I don't know what the final numbers ended up being in the arena, but I have to say that there was a, it was a good energy in the building to start. There were a number of folks in, uh, in Capitals gear. I wasn't sure if that was because Dylan McElrath got recalled to um, Washington, although he got sent back to Hershey. I think he got called back up. He got called either yesterday or this morning, but they already sent him back to uh, 
to Hershey. So the Winnipegger didn't even get a chance to uh, be in the press box for tonight's game because he was sent back to the AHL. But regardless, it was a good crowd uh, on hand, and, and it seemed like there was a good energy in the building. Um, but ultimately, like I said, the first period, a little unusual, and then the uh, second, which, which you know, they talked about on the broadcast in the third period, has been a good period for the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets have been a fairly good second-period team this season, um, but, you know, that doesn't always happen, and uh, there was, you know, there were some unusual situations in that period. I mean, I don't know how many times we see shorthanded uh, penalty shots uh, given up on a double minor where the Jets yeah. could have actually been building some momentum. And of course a two, nothing game. And ultimately if your power play scores, a two, one game suddenly mm-hmm. becomes a three, nothing game. And now you're really chasing. So um, just unusual, but like I said, that's uh, this is what happens when you have an 82 game schedule. Yeah. There's going to be some that are just not your night your off night. And I mean, I see some comments that, you know, Washington's not as good as I'm giving them credit for. I think ultimately come playoff time, they will be in there in the Eastern conference, but they played, they made the jets play their game tonight, which is sort of what you want to do on the road. You know, the Washington was not going to, you know, let the jets dictate the pace of play. They were not going to let the jets dictate the style of game. They wanted to play a very, ugly game really without not letting the jets get any speed through the neutral zone and you saw it on the broadcast there for a while they showed the how you know you know the caps put four guys back almost behind their the red line when the jets were coming with the puck they were saying you know you're going to have to skate through or dump and chase throughout the you know throughout our team in order to try and get the puck in deep they were not going to let the jets get hit the blue line hit the caps blue line with any speed and I understand that as a good strategy, and they did it to they did a pretty good job at it. And the Jets weren't able to to beat that for the majority of the game. The Jets were forced to play into Washington's hands, and Washington would say thank you very much. And then on top of everything else, I mean, like you said, Dave, you don't count on any shorthanded penalty shots, but then when you get that opportunity, you capitalize on it. Pardon the pun. Uh, so it works out very well for the team from Washington that everything, you know, sort of they played a good style of game. They play, had a good approach to neutralizing the Jets. And then on top of it, they were also fortuitous, you know, you know, fortuitous in, in the sense that you still have to earn the penalty shot and then you take advantage of it. So why don't we get into it, Dave? The Betway game recap as we do each and every game here on the Illegal Curve post game show. It's brought to you by our friends at Betway. Way, uh, the official sponsor of the Illegal Curve post game show. Uh, Betway is one of the most trusted voices in sports betting, both in Canada and all around the world. Betway is the sports betting app that puts you, the customer, at the forefront with a large selection of betting options and sports, as well as strong promotions and fair odds. What are you waiting for? Head on over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. We talked about that first period, and it was a pretty even first period. The Caps controlled the first 10, the Jets controlled the bottom 10, and you said, okay, 20 minutes, no damage done. There were some good saves by Connor Hellebuck, especially early in that game. The numbers aren't going to look good for Hellebuck tonight, giving up four and the empty netter to make it five. Of course, that won't count against them, but there were a number of Connor Hellebuck-esque saves, especially in that first period, Dave, when the Jets were trying to find their game and sort of get their uh, and get their skating legs uh, behind him. He's the one who made sure that it was 0-0 after 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, as we've seen so many times throughout the course of his career uh, in Winnipeg, I mean, that is, he's always been a difference maker. And so the reality for the Jets and for Connor Hellebuck is he keeps them in games. And when they're not, you know, as, as Rick Bonus likes to say, or probably doesn't like to say, but will say, when the team doesn't start on time and when the team is back on their heels, well, they've got an equalizer. They've got a guy who's in net, who's going to make, you know, the save more often than not. And that's exactly what Connor Hellebuck did in that first period. And there were a couple of saves that you're like, okay, those are Connor Hellebuck type saves and, and, you know, a little bit of robbery from, from number 37. So um, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a tough opening 10 minutes as we've discussed through. And so you're, if you're the jets, you're sitting there going, well, you know, and you're expecting them to have some sort of pushback because uh, remember, you're still feeling good about your game, regardless of, Oh, we're tired. You know, look, you didn't practice yesterday. You had an optional skate, which most guys didn't take the optional today. Remember yeah. that? No, I should say most guys, but there were like a handful of guys who didn't take the option to skate today. So remember what does Rick Bonus say? I don't care if you choose not to skate, but you better be ready to go when the game starts. Well, the team wasn't really ready to go. So we'll see. We don't know what the schedule looks like for tomorrow. But, uh, 
you know, I, I would imagine that probably can have some sort of practice. I would think they should yeah. hit the ice at some point tomorrow. Well, we don't know. Right. But like I said, when you had the Sunday off, uh, sorry, Saturday off, and then you had, uh, and then you had a game today. And like I said, it was an optional morning skate. You'd think that maybe they'll get them back on the ice because look, there's some, I'm sure things- that I think there's probably a practice. We haven't seen the weekly schedule come out. Yeah, yet, it hasn't come out I yet. would assume there'll be a practice tomorrow at, you know, usually around 12 noon or something like that tomorrow. I would expect that there's going to be a, a practice. Um, Cause you're right. You just want to sort of, you know, you, I, I can understand today's morning skate being an optional because the morning skates often are an optional. Sure, especially sure. nowadays, yep. you know, this day yep. and age in the NHL, the morning skate. Lots of teams have got, done away with the morning skates, and I think all the teams have made them at least, at the very least, optional. So I don't have a problem with guys taking the option. Tomorrow, you'll see the team on the ice for practice. I would no, almost, I'd, I'd bet, I'd bet a lot on it. Oh no, no, for sure. I, I, it's not, it's not so much. And I guess we should be paying attention because they punted on um, the injury the, update on the injury update. So yeah, I'd I'm imagine keeping an Rick, eye on it. So I'm imagining Rick Bonus will give that on. I don't know why they punted. That was very unusual. Uh, Scott O'Neill spoke, I understand, because of his connection to Washington, but they didn't give an update other than to say that Saku Menelainen and, and uh, Logan Stanley have been put on IR and that the team recalled, I guess we should have talked about before we got into the Betway game recap, but uh, that Kevin Stanlin of the Mount of Moose had been recalled. Um, mm-hmm. So who obviously had played. It was interesting, actually. It, it, again, another point I probably should have brought up in, uh, you know, we get it so excited. It's usually a little easier when there's three of us because then I've got Ezzy who can start the chat and I can bring in some points that I've, <laughs> My observations, if you will, but Kevin Stanley took the the skate, which I thought was a, a, a interesting the warm up skate yeah. here in Winnipeg. So, um, you know, he had already played two games this weekend: Friday night in Abbotsford, last night in Abbotsford. In theory, if the move, if the Jets weren't gonna, you know, be a forward short, he didn't take line rushes. He was the thirteenth forward, and obviously a healthy scratch in the end. But if they were contemplating him being in the lineup, it's interesting that they only recalled the one obviously on a, an emergency basis for Kevin Stenland, but we're waiting to see what the update is going to be on Saku Manalainen. Well, we and know that both Manalainen and Stanley are out for went at on, least a week. Yeah. So they're on they're IR. Week. So that yeah. should tell you that it's not a day-to-day situation. They're going to be gone at least, at least for a week. week. Yeah. Uh, not, a, not LTIR. LTIR is something no, just completely IR. different. But IR means that, you know, you're going to be, they're going to be absent for at least a week or so. Yeah, yeah, um, retro. I mean, I would imagine which to, is to, not a surprise. I would think. I mean, you you watch both of those injuries. You know, it, it doesn't strike me as a surprise that you won't see both of those guys. I, I, I'd be surprised if you saw either of them. Certainly on the home stand, we know that's probably not going to happen. And who knows about Vancouver and Seattle yet? You know, that's yeah. you know, we'll we'll find out more uh, when the uh, you know presumably when Scott Bowman. Oh, here it is. About, uh, courtesy about Scott Bowman. Billick, uh, Saku Manalainen and Logan Stanley will be out for quote. A long time, Oof. according to Jets head coach Rick Bonus, he clarified a bit, saying at least a month. Stanley's injury isn't the same as both, so they're both out at least a month, which is uh, a significant loss, Yikes. obviously for both of them. Uh, more than a month, apparently, at least a month, more than a month, depending on uh, which uh, reporter uh, you're following. So it sounds like both of those guys, the injury bug, which had bit the Jets with obviously Mason Appleton and Nikolai Ehlers and then Logan Stanley, and he came, came back. Now Stanley and Manaline and both out uh, for longer than a month, uh, each of them. So the Jets, the injury bug is certainly biting this team something significant uh, and really going to be testing the depth on the blue line and uh, among the forward group. And so the Jets, I mean, you look down the roster, and we talked a lot about injuries this year from the Jets perspective and the perspective of the other teams they've been playing against, uh, you know, and it's not necessarily, you know, Ehlers is the big name still injured of the quote unquote right. superstars on this Jets team. But these mm-hmm. guys are, are your depth guys. These are guys who've been very key to the Winnipeg Jets success this year, the depth scoring, the being able to plug and play and get effective time and effective minutes from these guys. So you're going to see, uh, obviously, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Kevin Stenland uh, in the lineup one of these days coming up, uh, possibly even Tuesday against the against the Vegas Golden Knights. Because personally, yeah. Sam Gagne has been underwhelming to me as of late. And he was great yeah. for the Jets, you know, sort of early in the year. But to me, yeah. he's been underwhelming a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see Stenland come in, another big-bodied player, maybe playing a similar role to what Manalainen has been doing for the Jets so far uh, in a heavy four-check role, maybe with Adam Lowry, maybe with uh, Morgan Barron. Obviously, I'm not going to speculate on the lines or anything, but 
that's the injury update. Significant injuries to both Logan Stanley and Saku Manalainen, both out for a month, which is significant for the Jets, Dave. Yeah, there's no question about that, Drew. That's uh, If as he was here, I'd be busy updating illegalcurve.com, but I'm going to stay focused mm-hmm. right now on the post-game show. I can get to the injury news and update the website after because people that I care about are in the chat right now, and they're already aware of that news. But I also care about the people on illegalcurve.com, of course, so I don't want to malign them. Yeah, really tough. I mean, look, Sacram- like Logan Stanley is whatever, but the but the reality is that Sacramento Lion has been a, you know, a significant addition to this Winnipeg Jets club. He's he's scored a few goals. He's been excellent on the penalty kill. He's been a nice, you know, addition to this lineup. And so we knew when we saw the injury in St. Louis that it didn't look good, just based on the way mm-hmm. he he grabbed his shoulder and went to the room. And it didn't again, like I said, we're not doctors and we don't play that role here on this show. But it it just didn't look good. I I did find it curious that the team didn't um, make a uh, recall earlier because you know I thought the Moose were playing last night and so you're gonna let all of those guys play and then again travel. It's presumed the the Moose of course traveled from Abbotsford to Calgary today, but you never know, right? I mean, it could always be a travel situation, so you've got to be aware of that. And so from a from a Jets perspective, I thought, and especially with you know, the way it is right now, they've got 12 forwards. So you could have recalled actually two guys quite mm-hmm. easily to have 14. And then obviously you would have had Kyle Capo Bianco. And, and the reason why I said that is because, you know, if, if um, they would have been, they could have been short of a forward ultimately. Right. Because it looked like obviously someone wasn't hundred percent healthy because they put Stenland, uh, you know, in warm up skates. So it's clearly one of the forwards isn't, isn't healthy. So I thought the Jets played a little with a little bit of fire there, in that situation, but really tough news. Uh, yeah. From an injury perspective, because now you've got Nikolai Ehlers out till sometime in January. Mason mm-hmm. Appleton is out till sometime in January. Mm-hmm. And now you add two more guys to out till sometime in January. in January. And again, the defense has been fine without Logan Stanley. They've not had him in the lineup for six weeks. So I think his absence is not, you know, really going to be felt significantly by this Jets team, because I think Sandberg is more than capable of filling that role. But the Sacramento Lion one, that's the one that, yeah, I mean, look, Kevin Stanland is a, he's a big body and mm-hmm. he's played, I think, 71 NHL games. So it's not as if he's, he doesn't have NHL games under his belt. I think he's like 11 goals, nine assists uh, with the Columbus Blue Jackets, who of course drafted him. He's a, a buddy of, of Pierre-Luc Dubois. They have some chem, some history, of course, uh, coming up through the organization together. So, um, you know, I think Stanland is a guy who's capable and, and when I've talked to him, you know, for the moose and we've talked to, to you know, whether it's post game or whatever, you know, he was always aware. He knew, he said the team is what you know, the, the jets are watching. You want to make sure that you're putting in a good effort. And I, people ask me, who do I think could have been a, a recall candidate? And I would have said Stanland or Alex Limoges, who of course is the moose leading scorer or Jeff Malott, who has, I think the, the most goals on the, on the map of moose. So, um, or Christian Reichel, if they wanted someone in that sort of, right shot penalty kill role um, potentially. So uh, Stan Lynn, I think was a good recall. Uh, obviously they could have done Tom Matto as well, but um, right for right now, it's an emergency recall would imagine of course that it will change to a regular recall fairly soon. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, this is a, a an interesting uh, situation for the jets because you were humming along, but I mean, you can never, you can't not anticipate that you're going to suffer injuries. And there's also, we've seen guys, um, jump in and I, and I should qualify this. And this is an important detail, I think for, uh, for folks who are paying attention to, you know, the moose and, and guys coming up from the moose. It is no longer Mikey Essimont for the record, Michael Essimont. So he is, he is going by Michael Essimont for the record. So I will no longer be referencing him, although I may or may not have still tweeted Mikey a couple of times, but just so <laughs> people know, it's going to be Mikey, Michael, this is, sorry. See, I'm Michael, there. it's going to be Michael. Michael. Cause this is what he's requested is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Which, which is, is which something, is, which is what happens. And it's, you know, sometimes, you know, everyone thinks they're pronouncing a guy's name, right. And then he has to go sort of quietly and say to the assembled yeah. media, no, it's actually this pronunciation or sure. no, I actually prefer this to be uh, how you reference me. Uh, I prefer yeah. to be referenced as King Drew of a legal curve, but so far yes. uh, that hasn't come to fruition, but you know, fingers crossed that that soon will one day uh, be what you guys refer to me as. Uh, Anyways, but that, would be, that might be the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me, but that's a separate yeah, issue. King, King Drew would be an interesting one, but yeah, anyways, exactly. the point is that look, there's going to be guys who are going to look the, the, the ultimate point I was trying to make there was just that there's that idea of opportunity. 
-hmm. and guys need to take advantage of it. And we've seen Morgan Barron step in and play, you know, he had a decent game, you know, Jansen Harkins was creating and trying to, you know, do some things tonight. So there's, there's guys who are hungry for that opportunity. Alex Limoges, a guy who, like I said, uh, played in the San Diego organization, which is obviously the Anaheim Ducks organization, got some games in with the Ducks, you know, that he's looking, he's the moose leading scorer right now. He had a nice game winning goal. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to submarine my Manuk Moose minute, but no. uh, Alex Limoges, um, he's been performing for the moose. So he's a guy who I think you could, you could give a chance to. And, and Jeff Malott is another guy who is, is, is something the jets could use. He's a big body. I think he's six, four, um, but he's in front of the net. He, he, he scores in the dirty area and he's not afraid to be in front and take some pain and give it up. So to me, Jeff Malott is another guy who maybe you want to give a little bit of an extended look. Cause that to me ultimately is we've talked about this for years and years and years and years on the show is that so many times when people are like, Oh, this guy came up from the, from the AHL and he, he, he was terrible and he, he didn't deserve to stay. But again, these guys play with, there's a lot of fear, you know, fear of making a mistake. I'm only going to play one game. And then I'm going back. Well, now these guys know, well, I'm not going to play just one game. I've got, I've got a, I've got some runway to use that, uh, that expression. And so there's a little bit of runway here with the jets, with the four players we've already mentioned, three of whom obviously are forwards. So there's some runway for guys who come up from the Manitoba moose who are going to know, Hey, I could get some games under my belt. Now, again, there's going to be a challenge that you could be, you know, mixed and matched very easily. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not performing, you're not going to be, you're not going to stay there, but I just think they're going to know that, Hey, if I perform, I'm going to have two, three, four, five games in a row here in order to, you know, prove that I can earn the spot. And so that to me is, I think it's great. I think it's a great carrot to dangle in front of players and say, here's your chance. And it's great for players to say, okay, I'm going to do what I can do and show them that, Hey, it's not just at the American hockey league level that I can produce, but I can also do it at the NHL level. You're right about that. Let's get into the actual goals as we've talked about the first period, which was 0-0. The Capitals opened the scoring at the 325 mark of the first period. It's Trevor Van Riemsdyk, his second of the year assist to Nick Dowd and, and Pro, uh, Protus, Alexei Protus, uh, his third assist on the year. It makes it one nothing. This is just a blown coverage by the Jets. Two guys go to Dowd. And they, I believe it was Sam Gagne and Nate Schmidt, if I'm not mistaken. And they just leave uh, Van Riemsdyk to walk in from the point as Dowd slips the pass to Van Riemsdyk. And he walks in and he snipes it from sort of the top of the circles or give or take a couple feet. Uh, great shot, but just a, a blown coverage by the Winnipeg Jets on this play. You know, Schmidt was in a good position on Dowd. And I don't know why Gagne sort of left what he his responsibility to cover Van Riemsdyk was here uh, and it cost the Jets, obviously, giving the Capitals a one nothing lead. Well, how, uh, Drew, just think about it. What was that goal we saw where two guys went after Michael Essimont and Kyle, know, Connor, Kyle Connor, Kyle yeah. Connor burnt them? Yeah. And it's the exact same situation, right? So, you know, two Jets descend on, uh, on Dowd and he makes a heck of a nice uh, pass to Van Riemsdyk. And you got to give Van Riemsdyk credit. He, I mean, Hellebuck has no chance. There's about 17 guys in front of him. And mm -hmm. so he puts it up. I think from my perspective, it looked like he went top corner. Yeah, but the reality right. was it was, uh, I mean, Hellebuck had no chance. They, I don't know. You couldn't see through that screen. There were way too many guys. Again, a failure of, mm -hmm. of, his, of his team to clear the front of the net so he could see that shot. And it was a, it was a defensive breakdown. And it makes the, the Jets, it was a beautiful passing play by, by Washington. And the Jets paid to, uh, you know, paid to the price because now they're finding themselves down one nothing. You talked about that Michael Essimont play where he chipped it up to Kyle Connor. Same idea. Yeah. Dowd is not a risk there. He's not a threat. He's he's right. way up on the boards. His back is almost to the to the Jets goal there. There's no reason for two guys to go there. He's not a threat, right. even in a one on one situation there. There's nothing that not no good can come from from pressuring him there because it just leaves the guy open. And I suppose maybe you pressure him and you try and force a turnover, but you're not forcing a turnover that's going to lead to anything immediate there. So a blown coverage, it was Sam Gagne who who left uh, Van Riemsdyk and it uh, ends up costing the Jets uh, to make it one nothing. Then the Jets run into some penalty troubles and they almost get out of it. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And they, they were close but no cigar. Five on three situation for about... Uh, the five on three was for uh, just 57 seconds. Yeah. And with about 20 seconds left in the second penalty, the this Gustafson was the one, one. that Gustafson yeah. was serving for tripping. 
uh, Kuznetsov makes it two nothing on the power play, a backhand goal, assisted John Carlson and Connor Sherry, and and it's two nothing for the Capitals at this point in time. And it's been a bad second period for the Jets, and it, it's it's still going to get worse before it gets better. You know what's never a good thing when you're not, one of your top uh, penalty killers is in the is in the penalty box. That's yeah. never a good thing. And look, David Gustin doesn't take a lot of penalties, so it is what it is. But as soon as you see David Gustafson, well, you're already cl- killing a Blake Wheeler penalty you know, heading to the penalty box and knowing it's going to be a five on three. I thought the Jets did an admirable job on the five on three and were mm-hmm. able to kill it off, obviously for the, to the Wheeler penalty. Yeah. And then uh, up until like you said, Drew 21 seconds, I think it was left in the guts of some uh, minor. They were able to, you know, score and look, give Kuznets off credit. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful goal. I mean, he, he really player. Yeah, he's he, he he you know and Hellebuck. There's some options. He's kind of caught in between, and yeah. and Kuznetsov puts it up and over him. So a uh, real nice goal by Kuznetsov, and and yeah, the Jets find themselves down, but not not really out. I mean, it's a two nothing game, and the Jets have the firepower to to really get like they're not playing they're not playing great, right? That's right. the second period in a row now where they've they've fallen asleep for the first ten minutes of it. So mm-hmm. you're, so, but the way we, again, this isn't the same team that we've seen traditionally where if you know they start to get out of it, it's like okay, well this one's over. This is like I said. This is like a team from a few years back when the Jets are never really out of a hockey game. Well, the, and they certain and opportunities certainly came their way here because mm-hmm. after the Caps make it two nothing, uh, Lars Eller, we, you know, you talked about him his nine nine hundredth career NHL game tonight. He takes yeah. a double minor for high sticking. So this happens, uh, you know, fifty six seconds uh, or pardon me, fifty. Uh, do some quick math. Blah, 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 fifty, yeah, fifty six seconds after uh, the Caps make it two nothing. You know, our, Lars Eller takes this double minor. So the Jets figure, hey, we have a four minute power play. Our power play has been exceedingly good as of late. It's almost been good for one goal a game. Let's see if we can cut that lead in half. We haven't been had a great second period. We haven't had a great game to this point. But if we're only trailing by one, well, then, you know, it's anybody's game at that point in time. Instead, the opposite happens. Uh, Marcus Johansson gets sent in on a breakaway. I believe it's Josh Morrissey uh, takes yeah. a slashing penalty. Uh, they don't give, they don't penalize Morrissey into the box. They penalize it with a penalty shot, a shorthanded penalty shot for Marcus Johansson, who makes no mistake. A beautiful goal, his seventh of the year. This comes at nine fifty-five of the second period, and it's three nothing at that point in time. And three nothing. I mean, the shorthanded, the, the power play opportunity the Jets had went for naught, and yeah. went not even for naught. It went for the opposite direction. Went to the uh, to the favor of the Capitals, and the Jets are really in trouble. Down three nothing at the basically the thirty minute mark of the game. And, and I believe it was Kuznetsov. I could be wrong. Who made that kind of diving um, leap? It's exactly, at, who it was. It was Kuznetsov yeah. who, who poked diving it forward. Leap. Yeah, yeah, so he made the diving leap at the Jets' blue line in order to poke that puck ahead. And uh, look, it, it, folks didn't like the, the, that it was a penalty shot uh, call, but, I mean, Josh Morrissey definitely got his his stick in around the hands and prevented him from getting a shot away. So um, the refs saw it the way they saw it, and they had a pretty clear view of that. And it was, you know, the unusual part about it, and again, it's not something they would have shown on TV, but because I'm in the press box, I was able to see it. But what was very unusual was Alex Ovechkin had his arm up the entire time. Like, it was just really weird. It was like he knew he was sitting on the bench at the end, and he had his hand up the entire time, like, as if he knew that he was going to be, like, slapping him high five. I mean, I guess <laughs> it's his way of showing him confidence. But, I mean, look, another – Connor Hellebuck, look, Connor Hellebuck is one of the best goaltenders in the in the NHL. Yeah. There's no question. Nobody's arguing that. No, we're not going to have a discussion about that because there's no need. But Connor Hellebuck isn't great in the shootout. I mean, we've we've talked about that. I don't know what his exact shootout numbers are, but but he's not great on shootouts. I at least my personal opinion is that he's not great on shootouts. Maybe his numbers would suggest otherwise, but it just seems like he doesn't have great success when it comes to the shootout. Um, and a, and a penalty shot is whatever. I mean, there's it. You know, he came in with speed, and it was a nice. Again, it was a nice play by by them to give him a three nothing lead. Um, but it's just such an unfortunate situation in that part of the game. Dylan DeMello gets that that you know the high stick which draws the blood. And you really have a chance on a double minor with the fact that your power play had been clicking. And mm-hmm. you gotta give Lindgren, we also have to give Lindgren credit. I mean, he, he played, was he made he all played, the big saves. But he was also he was also like he matched Connor Hellebuck. I thought he mm-hmm. was excellent in that, and he was making a number of you know excellent saves in the first two periods. Um, and even even in the third period, he made a number of nice saves. So you got to give him credit as well. It's not just that the Jets weren't able to score. I mean, like 
they like we always talk about their their goaltender gets paid too and their goaltender sometimes is able to you know stymie the the opposition and that's what i thought he was able to do quite successfully and you could argue the jets didn't type the type of you know requisite shots that they needed to and the the dirty the greasy ones that sometimes this team kind of passes off in terms of trying to get something like again there, even in the first period there were a couple of instances where i don't remember who made the pass to Jansen Harkins um but it was just like a, it was like a too hot it might have been Morgan Barron and there was a bit of a too hot to handle where if he taps it in you know it cuts the lead down i think it might have been or maybe it was in second it might have been 2-1 so look there were a number of instances where the jets could have been within and they didn't take advantage and they found themselves down. And so when you're down to nothing, we've talked about it. This Jets team is more than capable of coming back. Three nothing is yeah. a little bit more of a di- again. I didn't think three nothing would be insurmountable, but it's a little bit more of a you know, we're not seeing it. And again, you've had two bad starts to periods, which is very difficult in terms of you know creating something when you're finding yourself down by three goals. So uh, you know, if the Jets were gonna do something, they were gonna have to quickly try and uh, flip the script, which as you're about to get into, Drew, they were, not, they were unable <laughs> they, to do. No, they, they the script wasn't ready to be flipped yet. The uh, Caps make it four nothing at the fifteen twenty four mark. Lars Eller, his sixth of the year, assist to Anthony Mantha and Dmitry Orlov, who was sort of a surprise uh, participant for the Capitals in today's game. I don't think that based on our conversation yesterday with Samantha Pell that we expected uh, Dmitry Orlov to be on the blue line for the Capitals tonight. But I think most people thought he'd get another game uh, or another day of practice but he yeah. plays for the capitals he gets two assists tonight he also gets an assist on the empty netter but Lars Eller makes it four nothing and uh it's basically all all that's said and done at that point in time it's unlikely you're going to come down come back from four goals down uh where the Jets were after 40 minutes yeah I mean when I, I think my tweet was and there go the pretzels <laughs> yes you do love the pretzel one uh I do it's know, like, it's, they, it's they, good, they call him good... whitey whackers uh hall of famer whitey ford out to uh, out to plead for some sanity <laughs> And there go the pretzels. Now, once yeah. they made it four nothing, it seemed, it seemed, and again, like I said, with Lindgren playing the way he had been, it seemed very unlikely the Jets were going to be able to come back in this one, given the fact that they hadn't uh, really shown up for the first ten minutes of the first two periods. So, um, once once that fourth goal went in, you kind of said, okay, well, this one is, and and maybe you try and, you know, we we always talk about how, oh, well, you're not going to necessarily come back and score four goals in one shift, but slowly build something so you can at least say. Well, we salvaged the third period mm-hmm. and we were able to build on that into the next game on, on Tuesday. And, you know, clearly you want to come back and you want to tie it. And the reality truth, truthfully was you get an, and again, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but if you get an early goal, which they obviously did, and you yeah. get a subsequent goal, yeah. suddenly now, you know, you don't need well, to score too quickly. You could just get that third one. And now suddenly Washington's really tight. I thought Peter Lavier, Laviolette called Agreed. a very smart timeout after 100%. the Jets made it 4-2. So let, let's get into the third period. So it's 4 nothing after 40 minutes, and then we'll talk about the timeout. Adam Lowry, just what the Jets needed, uh, opens the scoring at the 35-second mark of the third period. Uh, his seventh of the year assist to Josh Morrissey, of course, and Morgan Barron. And the Jets, that's exactly what they needed, to get a little bit of fight and a little bit yeah. of life and get a little bit of hope uh, to, to their game for that third period. They make it 4-1 at that point in time, Dave. Yeah, no, there's there's no question about it, and and it's exactly how you want to come. Like the f- previous two periods, you didn't come out aggressively. You didn't. You were back on your heels, and right. and you got you didn't get necessarily burned because Hellebuck was able to stop the shots, but you just didn't have control of the puck. And so what ends up happening in the third period is that you get that early goal, and they had some chances. Don't get me wrong. Like even in the first period, I think the Jets had an early chance. So or maybe it was the second, but ultimately, if you don't score, it it it. it you know, the momentum that you could potentially build isn't there. And instead you score, you get the crowd into it because it's early enough that people are like, huh, okay, 4-1. Maybe it's kind of possible versus, Mm -hmm. you know, if you score that goal with 10 minutes to go in the game, well, who cares? You know, all you're doing doing at that point is breaking Lindgren's uh, (laughs) shutout at that point. You know, you're not, you're not doing anything that's going to really get people, you know, excited and galvanized, but now suddenly 4-1 early in the third, a little bit of a different story. Make it 4-2, just over uh, at the 329 mark of the third period. Dubois, his 14th mini stick style. Uh, if you look at the replay on how he actually choked up on that uh, on, on that great pass from Kyle Connor, Michael Acemont gets the assist on it as well uh, to make it 4-2. And then you're beginning to think a little bit. And it's a great play by Dubois here, and it's a great pass from Kyle Connor. Uh, but what 
I think really was a smart decision at this point was Peter Laviolette using his timeout and just calming the waters. Cause it seems like, you know, he, the use of that timeout sort of just made the game sort of recalibrate. Okay. He said to his team, I'm assuming or paraphrasing four, two, we're in a good position. Let's not lose our minds to just keep playing the game. We've played up to this point in time, the game we played through the first 40 minutes. And we'll be fine. We're, it's when if they start to get into a track meet or if they start to lose their structure that they use so well in the first two periods, that would maybe get the Jets, you know, even more hope to get back into the game. But everyone sort of took a deep breath. The Jets, you know, didn't – they had some momentum and they still had some chances. But to your point, Charlie Lindgren, who I think still goes by Charlie. I don't think he's yet Charles or Chuck, but I'm not sure. Charlie Lindgren made some saves when he had to. And then the Capitals were just sort of, you know, the, the the clock was not the Jets' friend. And I thought the timeout sort of just slowed everything down again. Yeah, there's, no, you're 100% right. And that and we see it, right? Oftentimes we wonder why coaches hold these timeouts in advance and don't actually use them because they don't carry over to the next game. Right. And 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 that absolutely changed the, the momentum of the game. I should say of the game, but of that period. Because it was all Jets. The crowd was into it because they're getting excited. And now suddenly... What happened? You know, Washington was able to start to push back and they didn't score, of course. But mm-hmm. what happened was they, they really arrested the Jets momentum and, and really prevented them from building something. Because if the Jets score shortly after the, the Pierre-Luc Dubois goal, and I agree that kind of a neat goal with the with the choked up mini stick yeah. sort of effect. But if they score on that one at, right shortly after that one or even within a few five minutes of that one, it's a totally different game. And now all the pressure. And the one thing we didn't mention, Drew, and one thing we've. I can't ever recall ever seeing because you often want a a coach to do this, but it almost never happens. And I know in in today's NHL coaches are willing to try things that they don't, they weren't traditionally before, but I thought Rick bonus pulling Connor Hellebuck with 10.4 seconds to go in the second period down for nothing. You have have nothing to lose. And although, you know, with uh, Alex Ovechkin's propensity for empty net goals uh, of late, you know, he's most likely to get it, get a snipe one, but I thought that was a really interesting decision because, I mean, it's one thing if you do it, we often say, okay, do it with like when you have one second left on the clock, two seconds, get an extra body, create a mm-hmm. little extra chaos in front of the net, and then maybe something happens. 10.4 seconds is a long time if you get possession for you to fire it at the empty net and really obviously, you know, put this game away. But I just thought I wanted to remind, uh, you know, go back to that uh, that moment in the game because, you know, it's unusual. It's not something we're, we're used to seeing. And I like that Rick Bonus was willing to kind of take a risk and and try something a little bit outside the outside the box to try and get his team going, you know, late in the second. Because look, if he scores that four one goal, you know, late in the second, and then right. if obviously if they're able to get a goal early in the third. I'm not saying it translates, but you know, you're it's a different look. So the, uh, reward, like the, fact, the reward is worth the risk in that instance. Absolutely. I mean, you've yeah. got. I mean, again, if you lose four nothing or you lose five nothing, who cares, right? Like it's not going to be right. like a big difference. But anyways, I just thought it was interesting. It's not something we we traditionally see very often. So. Mm-hmm. um yeah, and then going back to to uh, the timeout. I mean, look, it it definitely, like I said, it it stopped the Jets' momentum, and it really was uh, giving Washington the ability to get back. And we saw what happened, right? They pushed back in that period as a result and started to get some chances on Connor Hellebuck. Yeah, and then the Capitals end the scoring. They get into the empty net after Bonus pulled uh, Hellebuck again with about, you know, he pulled him with about two and a half, three minutes to go in the game again. You're down two. It's worth the risk at this point in yep. time. It's like it's like hitting on 16 against the when the dealers got a 10 showing. It's worth the risk. And the, uh, the, the war criminal sympathizer, Alex Ovechkin, gets his 17th uh, of the season. Assist, as I mentioned, to Dmitry Orlov and 5-2 is the final score in tonight's contest. Full marks to the Washington Capitals for their victory they were the better of the two teams with the jets winning streak comes to an end the caps winning streak improves to four games in length now the jets of course next in action on tuesday against the vegas golden knights a golden knights team that i believe is playing against the washington pardon me against the uh boston bruins, bruins right now yeah. and are losing on home ice if i'm not mistaken so that'll be uh certainly that's a, a pretty heavyweight tilt between the bruins and the golden knights yeah the bruins up 3-1 with uh, less than six minutes to go in the third period. By the uh, way, so Brent, that, yeah, Drew Brent is confirming my uh, my uh, my uh, theory about Connor Hellebuck. Thirty second in active goalies for shootout save percentage at six seventy. So uh, at least at least hey, at least I I'm accurate. At least I appreciate that yeah. Brent was trying to was not necessarily trying to keep me honest, giving us some information. But I'm glad that it it my the eye test 
matches what the what the numbers actually suggest. So yeah, Connor Hellebuck, not a shootout goaltender. Maybe Big Save Dave should be put into into the net for shootout situations. Jets, uh, yeah, the Jets have had what one shootout so far this year, if I'm not mistaken. If that, I can't really remember. I'd have to look I, back. And uh, I don't think so. Have they? They've maybe gone, not. Maybe they just lost so. the game and they just lost an overtime once. Is that? Yeah, it? they it lost the Eichel. They lost the game. To That's Eichel right, the and, Vegas and, game. Yeah, no, they haven't had That's a shootout. Right. They haven't had a shootout yet. Uh, exactly right. But uh, anyways, five two Washington wins tonight over the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Jets next in action on Tuesday night against the Vegas Golden Knights. Yep. We'll have post game here right around nine forty five or so on. Uh, on uh, Tuesday night uh, as the Jets and the Golden Knights will do battle for top spot or the two top teams in the Western Conference will do battle at the very least. When we come back, the unique code word, we announce the winner of the latest Legal Curve uh, merchandise contest. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned to that. You're going to want to find out who that winner is. It's definitely an eyebrow raising winner. Well, we we know the person is in the chat. That's all I'm going to say. I I see the person is in the chat. So I'm very excited to announce that winner. There you go. Something that we can talk about up next. You're watching the Illegal Curve post game show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk with you on a Sunday evening. We're live on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms. Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, John Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the biggest acts and all the up and comers. They've all made their mark at Rumors Comedy Club, North America's longest running independent comedy club. Rumors has kept Winnipeg laughing for over 25 years. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party, even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at RumorsComedyClub.com. He winds up. Oh, looks like Ezzy took that one right in the choppers. A blistering fast puck hurts like H-E double hockey sticks. That's why I let the pros at Linden Market Dental Center turn my yow into wow. Get your brilliant smile back with state-of-the-art restorative and cosmetic dentistry from real pros. And remember, always wear a mouth guard. Now that's solid on ice advice. Learn more at LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Whoa, Ezzy. Everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. Dave, my man, why are you in the car already? It's hours until game time. Uh, Drew, it's because I'm stressed out right now, driving around downtown Winnipeg, looking for a parking spot, and I'm not finding one. I've lost Ginsburg. I don't even know where that guy is right now. Dave, haven't I taught you anything? Do what I do. Pre-book your entire month's worth of game day parking with the Grid Park app. It's super easy to use and saves me both time and stress. Well, Drew, I'm not independently wealthy like you are. So I'm sorry that I don't have millions of dollars to pre-book my parking month in advance. What's that going to cost you? $25? How about 5 bucks? Come on, $5? No way. Five bucks. I'm not telling you a lie. And our listeners can get a free park with the new special promo code, Illegal Curve. Guess what? There's more. There's more, Drew. You're lying to me. What more could there be? Grid Park now has underground parking, so my car can stay warm during the game. So wait a second. Wait a second. All, All the driving around I do, looking for parking, minus 40. You're telling me I could be toasty warm in a car after the hockey game. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Underground parking. Just download the Grid Park app. That's G R Y D Park and use the code Illegal Curve. All one word. You'll park for free your first time. Hi, it's Drew from Illegal Curve here. Selling your home can be stressful, but it wasn't for me. Thanks to my friends at Zapia Group Realty, they made the process so easy. My home sold within 48 hours and with multiple offers. Zapia Group Realty took care of everything with their exquisite customer service and attention to detail. If you want to sell your home for more in less time, get started by talking to Frank and Mauro Zapia of Zapia Group Realty. Online at zapiagroup.com. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. 
from jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Bucks clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the illegal curve hockey show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. 9.30 Sunday evening, Drew Mandel, Dave Manouk with you here on the Illegal Curve post-game show. Going to give out some prizes, going to give out some award winners, going to give out some merchandise and some unique words. But first, some post-game quotes from various people involved with the Winnipeg Jets. We start with Rick Bonus on tonight's issues, this courtesy of our friend Murata Tesh of The Athletic. Quote, clearly the coverage on their first goal was a complete breakdown for us. Certainly was. We talked about that on the post-game show. Power play hurt us. You got a four-minute power play and give up the breakaway and the penalty shot. It kind of sets you on your heels a little bit against a veteran hockey club. Some positive from Rick Bonus's perspective. I liked how we finished the second period. The last four minutes, we felt we were still in the game, and we were. We made it 4-2, and we just didn't get that third goal. We started trading chances, but that's the only way you're going to get back in the game. That courtesy, Dave M., of the Winnipeg Jets head coach uh, talking about tonight's game. Let me read this from Pierre-Luc Dubois, then I'll let you comment on the whole plethora of post-game comments. Pierre-Luc Dubois on what Washington did well tonight. Their breakouts. They stretch out so our D can't really gap up. It makes it hard. There's a big gap between our forwards forechecking and our D with their forwards at the red line. The Jets were too slow to close that gap tonight. I think that's what Murat was adding as commentary as opposed to part of the quote. Pierre-Luc Dubois on Winnipeg's struggles versus teams that trap. If you can figure it out, if you can figure out the trap, you can get chances and opportunities. If you don't, it's hard to establish a four check, and we had a tough time tonight, whether it was the placement of our dumps, our dump ins, or getting that speed to four check. That courtesy of Pierre Luc Dubois via Maratatesh of The Athletic. So, some interesting comments from both Rick Bonus and Pierre Luc Dubois, Dave, regarding the Jets' performance tonight. Yeah, Pierre Luc, by the way, uh, Rick Bonus says I I used the reference already. Loves the I, back on our heels. He loves to that's his that's his big uh, quote. Well, that and we'll see. He likes he likes to use we'll see as well, but uh look, I I mean, I think he knows that it was it, I mean, it wasn't as if the Jets had a terrible hockey game, right? I mean, if you look at the numbers, the Jets weren't uh, it wasn't as if they were dominated for 60 minutes. They I I mean, they they yeah. didn't play well. They didn't play well in the first 10 of the first period. They didn't play well in the first 10 of the second period. And the, we, you know, hockey is a 60 minute game and you have to be ready to go. So there's, I'm not giving them an excuse. I mean, th- th- it is inexcusable to be out shot eight, one in the first 10 minutes of a game. And then 10, one in the first 10 minutes of the second period, there's no excuse for that. They needed to be ready to go. I just think that they were able to, you know, even things out. And if you look at the stats, they, they would that bear that out. And I just think, but Pierre-Luc Dubois is right. I mean, that's what the Jets need to do. They need to be able to overcome this. And I think it's that in-game adjustment that we've been able to see them do sometimes mm-hmm. throughout the course of this season. And clearly it, fr- it created frustration in the Jets today, but this is what I think they're going to need to do. I think they're going to, and, and again, you're not, we're not sitting here to say, well, we're going to pump the Jets tires after they lost five, two, but right. you're also not going to kill the Jets after the fact that, you know, they've won, they'd won four games in a row. I mean, remember, guys, it's not something we did. The Jets win four games in a row. The Jets win three games in a row last year, uh, right? Maybe once, <laughs> right? So, so four games in a row is like a like a major milestone for this Jets club. And so, I I just think it's it, you're in a, you're in a good headspace. And again, it doesn't you don't excuse you you need to have a better effort against Las Vegas. I just think that this is one of those games that you're like, okay, it's against an Eastern team, doesn't really have a huge significance. Again, not ideal, but. Not as if the um, you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, you're absolutely right there, Dave. And to your point about not throwing out the baby with the bathwater, this comment will be our tough duck hardest hitting comments for Whoa. tonight's game, courtesy of Peg City Hockey. If we go four wins for every loss, I'd be fine with that. Sometimes they just need to be short and sweet, folks. So there's the tough duck hardest hitting comment. Keep things in perspective. Yes, it's a loss for the Jets, but ultimately, if you go four and if you go four and one in every five game stretch from here on out, well. 
last time I checked, that's an 800 winning percentage, and that's going to put you in a very good spot. So congratulations to Peg City Hockey. Send me an email, drew at illegalcurve.com, or slide into my DMs at icdrew. Send us your name, send us your mailing address, and we'll make sure that the friends of ours at Tough Duck will send out a toque to you. Congratulations on winning tonight's Tough Duck Hardest Hitting Comment. We do it again now, on Tuesday night after the Jets and the Vegas Golden Knights, of course. Drew, a lot of lot of love for Tough Duck. Uh, Flying Dukes, I think, was talking yes. about, you know, and then I think someone else mentioned the, t- the getting uh, wearing their Tough Duck and stuff like that. So Tough Duck is getting a lot of love from the illegal curve community. And we're happy to hear that. So uh, keep, keep getting in these great comments. I don't ever get a chance to pick the tough duck winner, but that's okay. I'm happy with my role picking the, the winner of the, of the authentic jets merch and obviously other things I get to pick. Well, let's get into the merchandise contest and we'll wrap it all up later in a couple minutes. Just we'll wrap it all up with a Manuk Moose minute after the Moose game last night in Abbotsford. A brief Manuk Moose minute. <laughs> the unique code word for the illegal curve contest. I haven't seen anybody guess it yet, folks. Come on, yeah, you got to do your check, research. You got to find out. It's usually about the team that we're, the Jets are playing against. The opposition it has something to do with their home city. Again, if you haven't yet figured out how to enter the contest on the YouTube page, go to the show description, hit the drop down arrow you'll see the link to the contest just click the link there's a whole bunch of things you can do to gain entries and the more of those things that you do the more entries you get and then it resets at the at at the end of every month so you still got well 20 days left in the month of december and i'm pretty sure the jets play about 25 games in the next (laughs) 20 days so you got lots of time to still um, lots of opportunities to still try and win so be sure to enter the contest in the drop down arrow on the show description if you can't find it there it's all over our website Click on basically any article wow. on illegalcurve.com and you'll have- find the link to the entry there. Go ahead, David. Well, you, you said, wow, I stop everything. Breaking wow. news. I, I'm get, not breaking, but I'm going to give one person credit. One okay. person guessed the, the, the correct, see, the unique code word. So I don't know if it was Alan. I don't know if it was Frosty. I don't know if it was Kenny. I'm not certain who it was. But one, one, one of you intrepid folks had enough uh, Washington... Uh, I gave a did I did give you a clue about Washington, uh, something connected to Washington, which you know Drew just did as well. He reiterated that point, but the fact of the matter is, someone did get it. I did just checked, and one can person I, did win. Can I put it on the screen? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All righty. The unique code word for tonight: cherry blossoms. You know, cherry blossoms, they bloom in the spring in Washington. It's one of the things that the U.S. capital city is known for, that in uh, unfortunate insurrec- insurrections. Oh. But cherry who was, blossoms, by the way. who was it? It was Frosty. Way Frosty, to go, Frosty. I guessed it. Well done. There he goes. Yeah, you know, what, actually, I should have realized, because Frosty said earlier in the in the chat, I saw Frosty send a... Uh, send a flower my way. And I wasn't, I wasn't really paying, I was paying attention, but I didn't catch it until just now. Way to go, Frosty. A little bit. Uh, well done. Frosty Winnipeg. There you go. Cherry blossoms is the unique code for the illegal curve contest. Tonight. By the way, just so, just so people understand, Drew, I want to make sure yeah. it's clear. It doesn't yeah. matter that Frosty Winnipeg guessed the secret code word. No. First. He He's gets just, the same we, amount of <laughs> entries as yeah. everyone else. This There's is more no... just, this is just fun. Alan likes to get in on this. Everybody likes to guess and hope that they can, you know, you, you cool. get Remember absolutely show, nothing else for it. Remember the show Stump the Schwab? This is yeah. kind of like that. This is that you're you're just trying to get in a, a guess to see if you can think like Dave M, but it has absolutely nothing to do with. And by the way, that's a very scary place to be. But if you can, not as bad as Ginsburg, but but not you know it's 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 a little twisted. So the reality is, if you can guess it, it's great. But you get the same amount of entries as everybody else who now will enter cherry blossoms into the unique code word, and you're gonna get just as many points as everybody else. Exactly right. So congratulations to anybody who enters the unique code word of cherry blossoms, all one word, put it into the, uh, into the contest page. You'll get bonus entries for the next opportunity, which will come on Tuesday night to get your name selected for the illegal curve merchandise contest. Speaking of which the winner of the most recent illegal curve merchandise contest. And I think I can only say, may God have mercy on all of our souls. I'm very winner- excited. Oh, no, no, I, first of all, I want to announce it. Okay. Second you can of announce all, it. Yes. Second of all, yes. I am very excited to meet this person. I mean, I'm very excited to meet all of you. That's let's put that into perspective. I mean, I've got to, I've got to go visit Spencer Sutton, Frosty. I got, to, I got to actually a lot of people I have to go visit who yeah. have to get some, some, some Jets merch from Illegal Curve Hockey. Tracy, she's in the chat. I gave hers on Friday, um, but 
this person always in the chat, always having a good time. Drum roll, please. Brrr, Drew, the person with the winner is Kenny's water bottle. So Kenny's, Kenny's water, water bottle. bottle. Well done. Congratulations. Drew was actually on. We were, we realized as we were getting ready to go for the post game show that I didn't have, uh, I hadn't selected the winner yet. So I, while Drew was there, I pressed the button and sure enough, he drew can attest i the the exclamation of whoa winner is kenny's water bottle that should get uh that should get a uh, a good reaction from me and it got a good reaction from drew and we we're excited to hear what kenny's reaction it sounds like kenny's a little bit uh verklempt right now with his uh with his reaction but kenny's water bottle is the winner of the illegal curve contest so congratulations kenny and uh i'll be in touch and then i will get a chance to uh to meet you and you have to take a picture of him. You know that Kenny. The rule. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not, no, I don't destroy people's anonymity. I, oh, I, I'm very. I'm very you have no, to at least no, share no. it with me. You have no, to share I'm, the. No. You have to. I have to Please. see what this guy looks like. No, no I assume no, it's a guy. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it's say, just a water bottle. I was gonna say, don't make an assumption. The only thing yeah. I'm gonna do if I actually meet Kenny's water bottle, and I pray this happens, yeah. I really hope that he or she has a water bottle with a picture of Kenny on it that I can actually take a picture of with with the jersey, like in the jersey, and I'll tweet that one out. So, uh, Kenny, just so you know, that's a little idea for, for our meeting, which I hope will take place sometime this week. Of course, Tuesday, Thursday, Jets games might be a little bit tough. Yep. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll try and get my deliveries in. Basically, what Dave's saying is he's coming for Christmas dinner with the family, Kenny's Water Bottle. Oh, he's going to be sure. there at the, at the Christmas table. You know, you know, he's, you know, he'll forego the Chinese food in the movie, uh, as our people tend to do on, on Christmas yeah. Day. Instead, he's yeah. going to be spending it with Kenny's Water Bottle and Kenny's family, which I assume includes a thermos, uh, a Yeti, and uh, you know, maybe one of those – what are those fancy water bottles called? Uh, you know, the ones that are like 50 bucks uh, for uh, – I forgot what they're called. Um, uh, you know. Those fancy no, water bottles. Drew, you know I, I drive for the North End. I don't know anything about your fifty dollar water bottles. Come on, don't I don't you have one. Park? Obviously, I don't Drew, know it. Don't you watch the Grid Park commercial? I should know. I do not have. That's something true. Like that. I made of money. You're you're not you're not made of money. You're you're driving North around. Ender. Yeah, exactly right. Anyways, thank you, folks. Uh, congratulations to Kenny's water bottle and uh, and everything else. Hydro yeah, flask? hydro flask. It's something Whoa, very Bailey. close to a hydro know. flask. Bailey, yeah. Bailey is uh, rolling in it. Obviously, with Seriously. the hydro flask. All you people apparently have way more disposable uh, uh, disposable water bottle uh, uh, income, income than I do. That's True. okay. Maybe it sounds like a potential sponsorship uh, opportunity. <laughs> uh, we've got a water bottle company on board. All righty, let's do it, Dave. You know you've been waiting for it, everybody. We'll I wrap have. it up with one final thing tonight. It is time for the... Put on your antlers. It's time for the Manuk Moose Minute on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. <laughs> Now, Drew, I don't yeah. want to say it had it. There's a correspondence to my not watching the Moose game on Friday and them getting pumped seven nothing, and then my watching the Moose game on Saturday and them having the opposite type of game. But clearly, there was some sort of common denominator because the Moose uh, didn't uh, have the same sort of game as they had against Abbotsford the night before. Billy Hainola missed his second straight game. He's out with an illness. Um, but they had the same lineup. Arvid Holm, of course, he went in net after a scary Salmon and given up uh, the, a number of goals, obviously, the night before. So the Moose were largely intact with the same lineup. Um, you know, uh, assistant captain or alternate captain, sorry. Uh, Cole Meyer still dealing with what he's dealing with in the yellow non-contact. I didn't see Chaz Lucius. We don't know what his situation is. Obviously, with the Americans getting started, I think, tomorrow with their, their World Junior Camp, Chaz Lucius was on their roster uh, list, but I mean, again, when uh, I talked to Mark Morrison last week, he said that the head coach, obviously the Moose, he had indicated that he was weeks away. Possible that he's he's ready to go. We'll see. We'll find that out. Uh, the Moose are actually off to Calgary, so we won't be talking to them. I can find out though from the Moose people. See if we can get an update from them. But the Moose got things started off with the 2019 second rounder Simon Lundmark scoring his first goal of the season, big goal um, to make it one nothing for the Moose. Uh, Abbotsford was able to tie the game. The Moose PK again coming through for, for the AHL club of Winnipeg. And, uh, you know, the Abbotsford uh, Canucks still have a pretty good power play. But Alex Limoges, it was a real nice kind of individual effort uh, by him. And he ends up scoring the uh, what turned out to be the game-winning goal for the Manitoba Moose. I've got both those in note three today if you want to check those out on the website in the morning papers, but Alex Lamoge, he's the team leader in scoring and he scored a nice goal to, uh, to make it two one. And uh, it was a pretty good game. Actually, like I said, the, um, 
It was back and forth third period, but ultimately the Moose hung on for the win. And, you know, the remarkable stat, the one thing that, uh, that, you know, I pointed out after the game that I think is very interesting for this Moose club is the fact that they have now managed to successfully follow up every, they, they haven't started off these two game series very well. They've lost six of them, but they followed every single one, sorry, seven of them now, but they followed every single one up with a win. So kudos to the moose for able to, to showing that they can rebound. I mean, this mm-hmm. is, and I'm not one for making excuses, but it is a very young moose club. I think Daniel Fink once said they were the third youngest team in the AHL, but they've shown that they can, you know, bounce back in these types of games. And uh, you know, this is not the same moose club as we've seen from year, you know, the year before the year before that, you know, they've, they had some losses, obviously guys have graduated up to the NHL or you've lost a guy like Johnny Kovacevic who didn't get through to them on waivers. And as a result, they've had to adjust uh, the way things have gone. You know, some of the other teams, Milwaukee has been playing very well. So, you know, right now they're, uh, they're, they're still trying to kind of find their way winning percentage wise, because, you know, obviously in the NA, in the AHL where teams play, the Pacific coast teams play not as many games as the other, the teams in the other divisions. So it goes by winning percentage. The Moose are 11, six, two and one, still a pretty good record. And uh, they're going to be heading to Calgary to take on the Wranglers, obviously without Kevin Stanland, and we don't know, um, you know, I would imagine Villanola will probably be ready to go for the next uh, round, but we'll see. And then, uh, like I said, the one good thing is that Declan Chisholm and Leon Gavanke and Simon Lundmark and uh, T. Kona Pauly, don't worry about Tyrell Bauer. He had a good scrap. I will say he had a pretty good scrap. Uh, we had a good scrap yesterday. Oh, Nicholas Jones. Nicholas Jones had a pretty good scrap in yesterday's game. He's from Alberta, and sounds like they had the Nicholas Jones fan club in attendance uh, for him in Abbotsford. So uh, look, the Moose ended up picking up a two, one win. And like I said, they're they're They've, they've won a lot more games than they've lost and uh, they'll head to Calgary. Calgary's pretty good team, although they just lost the leading score in the AHL up to the flames. So that's the first, first ever. I, I actually misspoke. Cause I was like, they've played, they played the Stockton heat when they were here, but I realized after in consultation with Daniel Fink, who mm-hmm. gave me the heads up, the moose actually played Stockton here. And when, when they were Calgary, they played them during that Canadian year here in Winnipeg, but they never actually played in Calgary at the Saddle Dome. So this will officially be the first time on Tuesday night when the Moose ever go to Calgary to play the Calgary Wranglers in Calgary, Alberta. There you go. Thank you, Dave M. That's an excellent Manuk Moose Minute. Before we wrap up, the question uh, that In Bones We Trust had. What's the sure. most entries you've seen? Do you know a number off the top of your head? Like who's garnered the most entries over in the, in the Illegal Curve merchandise contest over the course of a month? Well, that's a very good question, Drew. Do you want me to? Do you want to know current, or do you want to know like ever? I, I think ever is what he was asking. If you have it handy, if you don't, whatever you have handy, I'm sure I can, uh, I can in get bones it. we trust will uh, will be glad to give you the. Uh... Okay, you look it up, and in the meantime, I'll give a, a shout out to our sponsors as we wrap up this post game show. Which Did is Frosty Winnipeg give you the thing? Because I'm not looking right now. No, Frosty Winnipeg hasn't put it up yet. So this is his alert that Frosty Winnipeg should put it up on the screen while I start reading. Because that's usually how it works is I start talking and then he puts it into the comments and then we'll throw it up there on the screen. So I want to say a big thank you to all the sponsors of Illegal Curve who make the post game show. That's this show. Who make the Saturday show. That happened yesterday. And they make the website a possibility. There it is. That's every day, by the way, for the record. That's good. Thank you. Rumors Restaurant. Part of me. Uh oh! Now I'm starting to choke again. <laughs> Drew, you're verklempt right now. <coughs> Holy, Daddy! Drew, you never you know, know when the you know, when that Drew, frog is going to get in my throat. It just comes Drew, out you of know nowhere. You need? Drew, you need a hydro flask. I do need a hydro flask. You know, I've been drinking this 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 pond water I've been finding outside, and it's certainly not doing the the trick okay. anymore. Okay, you finish off. I've got I've got the stats for this month, and there's, okay. there's some big numbers right now. And there you what, go. by the way, one of the high numbers, one of the yep. high numbers. He is in the chat. I no. I, I in fact, you've got more. Yeah, you've got actually. He already said what his number is, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. Keep okay. going, Drew. Big thank you to Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club, Linden Market Dental Center, Zapia Group Realty, Betway. They're the sponsor yeah. of the post game show. Yeah. Tough Duck, Boston Pizza, Seagrams, Rolly's Transfer, Grid Park, and the Keg. Support these fine businesses because of their continued support of illegal curb hockey. Dave M, give the people what they want. So the answer, Drew, yes. is should I give names or should I just give maybe I should just give entries? I'm not gonna just give, give names. entries. That's fine. Yeah, I'll give the, the entries. The top entry for this month, yes, is 192. Now he may have outed himself because I saw his name in the chat. The, after that, 185. Another guy who's in the chat, I know for actually the next few are in the chat. 178, 178, 178, 177, 175, 
170, 168, 165. Now the truth is, yeah. now what would be what would be interesting actually, Drew, which yes, I don't have the time to do right now. If we're going to do a forensic audit of the of the contest, yes. But I'd be very curious to know how it correlates between if the amount of entries you have versus mm-hmm. wins, you know, versus the people who win. So right. I can look that up. Maybe I'll have that information. You know, I mean, hey, I've got nothing better to do. I'll do that for for Tuesday show. I'll try and you see if Monday I can. Off. You might as well, the Moose aren't playing tomorrow. The Jets Fair aren't enough. playing tomorrow. You got nothing to do. You might as well do a deep dive into the illegal curve merchandise contest. So we have Dave Evans has something to do rather than you know rest or you know see loved ones or anything like that. You know, yeah. the, the 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 loved ones that really matter are you folks in the chats who can uh, keep going with the contest. And again, we constantly change the things you can do to get entries and to add right. things and take things away. So always be checking the contest page because that's going to be how you continue to rack up the entries between As now frosty is pointing out the highest the high number, number can, change. can change you can yes. always change it so i'm in, again tomorrow or mm-hmm. tonight depending yes. on like you know I, I obviously have a lot of things to do but the I, I add things so there'll be a new thing that you can retweet tomorrow that will gain you five more entries so every day that's the whole point it's not just like you do it and then you don't have to think about it again you don't in theory if you get one entry and you can win you know but at the same time you can always gain more just by going to our TikTok and maybe following it. And Bailey, don't worry, mm-hmm. we may be taking you up on it because even though Ezzy, you know, badgered me into creating a TikTok, I kind of don't really want to do it because I, quite honestly, I find it kind of stupid. So yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give it to, maybe give it to Bailey. I'll be like, here you go, Bailey. You're in charge of our, uh, our, I'm not guaranteeing it, Bailey. I'm just saying, I'm using that as just a, but we'll have to, we'll have to just have an illegal curve internal meeting. But anyways, why, why do you have to tell people you you love everyone? <laughs> Well, because I think when I said that, or that the loved ones, I think is what I said is the loved ones are in the chat. They're not, you know, not the loved ones that you have in real life, but the loved ones that are in the chat on a regular basis. So people were surprised that I'm saying that I love everyone, but I do love you folks. Even those of you that dislike me, that's okay. I know that it's done with, uh, well, there's no malice in your heart at the very least in, in that sense. So please, by all means, yes, I'm in the mood to love on. I don't know. Let me rephrase that. I love all of you. And maybe I'm not in the mood to love on all of you. My wife gets upset when I Wait. do that. With, uh, exactly my exactly, I mean, exactly like, Drew, this, right a, this, is a, this is a family show we got bailey in the chat let's let's keep this nice and uh above above board let's keep this g rating thank you very much so anywho go. what i was gonna say though yeah uh, just to answer chris's question it is cherry blossoms so let's maybe put that word back up i'll do that myself right now cherry blossoms in, ter- in question in answer to chris's question is the word or the unique code for the ic contest so chris just throw that in there and cherry blossoms and again that's going to be up tonight all day tomorrow i won't change that till tuesday at some point i mean eventually it does change and eventually we get back to the new word usually today for example as drew said i didn't do it till just before the show but sometimes i will do it you know a couple hours before so just make sure if you're going to get it in and i know we obviously have people who download the show and listen to the podcast and we love that and we appreciate even if you can't listen to us live you know listening to us after the fact and one quick thing i want to thank i want to thank people who are jumping on the podcast on the iTunes and leaving comments. I really appreciate that. I've seen more and more of you doing that. We you continue- appreciate it. We appreciate it. Sure. I, I drew, this is not a singular entity. We are, we are all one. This is like, we're, we're all one form here, but yes. so that when I say, Three musketeers, I all for generally one, one I, for all. when I write, I, I actually get uncomfortable. In fact, I, even if it's something I'm observing, I write, we mm-hmm. on our Instagram or on our Twitter, because it is not just mine or yours or Ezzy's. It is ours. So anywho, if you can, we will appreciate, sorry, Drew, that you would co- make those comments on the uh, Illegal Curve iTunes. So if you can do that, do that. Because it not only, hey, wait, not only are you doing that because I'm asking you, which should be enough. Yes. Right, Drew, that should be enough in You're theory. Asking. But you get yes. 10 entries. I'm sure Alan's oh. already done this. But you're going to get 10 entries if you uh, if you go on there and, and make a comment. So we appreciate that. the comment. Absolutely. So thank you, everyone. We should probably... Uh, end this show because we're going to be think so. running into another one you know drew it's a pretty long post game show that's what i'm gonna say dave i'm it's i thought this was going to be a bit of a short one given that you did say that you know, before should we give thought, should we give one we should we give one final uh, uh thing that the winnipeg ice they won yes. tonight 6-1 over uh regina i don't know why yes. I, I i got that wrong because i actually thought you were wrong because you said it was the last chance to see um bedard Connor and bedard. i was like and i was like well i don't know what drew's talking about because they're playing prince albert but I maybe they're going to Prince Albert next. So I said in my notes, oops, that they were playing Prince Albert tonight. I got the timer. Actually, I got the time wrong, I think, too. But so, Connor uh, Bernard wasn't even here. He's in Moncton at uh, World Junior Evaluation Camp. Ah, so I know so we, I know a we, number of people. 
I know a number of people who bought tickets to the tonight's ice game to see Connor Bedard and the ice, of course, because the ice yeah. are a dominant force that were, that were really surprised and a little bit disappointed that Connor Bedard wasn't there, but nonetheless, they saw a, a quality ice win. So that's always, uh, always uh, sends people home with a smile uh, depending. So if you were down at the university of Manitoba today, watching hockey, you're probably happy. If you were at, uh, the downtown arena watching the Jets, you're probably a little bit more disappointed. But, you know, say la vie as life will go on Tuesday night, the Jets and the Vegas Golden Knights. 9.45 p.m. for post game here. Do I answer what this you, one, Drew? What's that? What? In no, we'll, we'll, trust. let's do, save that for Tuesday. We'll save it for actually, Tuesday. But I will say that's the second time today someone asked on um, Facebook. Someone asked, I think it was Facebook or Instagram or something, and I answered the question. But uh, in Bones... If you want DM me, I'll, I'll I'll send you the four one one. But it involves Marty McSorley. Just there saying. you go. That's it. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll be back Tuesday night at nine forty five for Dave Manuka. I'm your host, Drew Mandel. This has been the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Until Tuesday night, we wish you good night and good luck. Thanks for listening to this broadcast from Illegal Curve Hockey. For more great Illegal Curve content, subscribe to the Illegal Curve YouTube channel. Follow at Illegal Curve on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And visit your online home for hockey in Winnipeg, IllegalCurve.com.